Good morning, community. It is a froggy, froggy, thick, muggy, warm morning here in Texas in June. And guys, we're fixing to ramp up to the triple digits. I am not looking forward to that, but we still got to keep on going, guys. Got to keep on going. Ta-da! The great clean out happened yesterday that I was telling y'all about last week, guys. Oh yeah, so we're gonna talk this morning about container gardening. And I think for us, one of the hardest things about them that uh, we are learning and that we really don't like, but we're still gonna keep on doing it. We pulled up the tomatoes yesterday and my tomatoes did fantastic. In here guys in fact we have been canning and selling them like crazy so they did very well in here and now greg's are starting to kick in still have a couple of plants down here they're looking a little less for the worn but uh, we want to get these tomatoes off before they're gone so you can see here all we pretty much left in these tubs in here are my herbs and that's because i'm freeze drying them and they are one of the best things that we have ever freeze dried. And they smell uh, beautiful. They taste beautiful once you freeze dry them. And um, our customers love them. So not much left in these here containers, but herbs and maybe some marigolds. We did go ahead and keep some uh, bell or Yeah, some peppers. I've got some uh, poblanos back there, some banana peppers, and uh, some jalapenos. And they seem to be doing okay. But uh, let's talk more about what you need to watch on your container gardening. So in this high tunnel, everything is planted in the ground and it's doing quite well in spite of the heat right now, guys. And so many of you have asked, how do you keep those alive in the heat? Well, number one, with a high tunnel, you can plant a little bit earlier in the season so that they get a good root system and uh, they can withstand a little bit more. But we open up the sides, we open up the door, and we have vents up top and we have fans blowing. But it is difficult at times, guys. Like yesterday, we had some storms roll in and we had to close it up around five, which is hard because it's still quite hot at five o'clock. And then we didn't get the storms. We don't like to do that. We want to, we'd love to keep it open all night long because our plants do need some air. But they're, they're looking pretty good this morning. These are our squash and zucchini plants and you can see that okra coming up back there, guys, it's really taken off and I have it all along the wall over there. Got to get in there and see what I got this morning. So it's 6 a.m. and it's already hot. It's, uh, it's already hot here. But uh, so primarily the big high tunnel, everything's in the ground. And in the little high tunnel, we uh, do container gardening. And we sometimes compare and see what's going on between what's in the ground and what's in containers. And I'm going to tell you what we found. Wait, it is muggy, 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 and foggy. And there's Miss Bear. She's waiting on her pop to come outside. Here's what the back acre's looking like, guys. It's looking pretty good. Things are really starting to take off, especially my purple holes and my okra down this aisle right here. It is really, really taking off. Ta-da! So here is all the soil that we took out of those tubs. Greg did that yesterday. And I want to show you, we've had the majority, well, I wouldn't say the majority, at least part of this soil in these tubs for probably about five plantings. And that would be about two years maybe. And a lot of it was root bound. As you can see over there, and look at that one there. And look at this one here. This almost looks like peat moss. And here and here. But the thing about it is, guys, is this soil was pretty much depleted. Even though we kept adding compost to it. So we would take out probably about 50% of the soil before we'd replant. And we would add compost to it. And uh, we would get some good growth at the beginning and uh, things would take off. But then disease set in. 
and they stopped producing, especially the tomatoes and um, uh, uh, the beans. The beans would stop producing, and then they would just get consumed with either spider mites or aphids. And you guys know that we have battled both spider mites and aphids over the years. And so, doing some further investigating, we have decided that we want to pull the soil out of the containers and we're going to start all over before we replant in them and greg just brought this back here and we'll just cover this area and let it wash in and uh see if maybe we can't put some wildflowers or something like that out here but anyway <clears throat> so we're learning depending on what you grow in your containers and depending on how you fertilize your containers it makes a big difference so growing tomatoes in containers tomatoes are a heavy feeder um, they need lots of lots of fertilizer. And, um, and so we probably pretty much had depleted anything, our soil in those containers um, that our tomatoes would need from those containers. Um, they just didn't do as good in the containers as they're doing in the ground. So that's number one. Number two, I know a lot of people who use the wicking tubs and container gardening um, use commercial fertilizers and i'm not going to say the name but you all know what it is um, it's very common and a lot of people use it and so greg likens that fertilizer to crack for the plants that if you constantly feed your plants this fertilizer that it's like crack to them and they get to where they don't respond to your natural fertilizers and all they want is that commercial fertilizer so if you're growing in containers and you're using that commercial fertilizer um, you'll probably be okay. I know that there's several channels out there that continue to grow in the same containers, but uh, they're using different fertilizers than we are. Now we're doing the regenerative gardening method. And what that means is we want living soil. We want living soil to go into our food um, because we, because the living soil is what gives our fruits the vitamins and the minerals that we want. Greg's motto is, I want my food to be my medicine. And so using the commercial fertilizers is not a route that we choose to go we want living soil and you can see that soil probably is not living so here's many of the tubs he emptied out yesterday so before we plant these again we're going to find a good organic potting mix you want a potting mix guys not a potting soil so container gardening is a great way to grow your food in a limited space. It's a great way. Um, it's also, if, even if it's not, even if you have acreage, but you want to grow food and you just don't have the energy or something to grow in the ground, container gardening is the way to go. Just be aware that depending on what you're growing in your containers, um, make sure you understand the feedings that they need. So we um, have done some investigating. You know, Greg is really hot and heavy on this regenerative gardening. And so whenever we start seeing things happen and things not prospering, he um, gets to the test and he starts finding out what's going on. And what we found is that um, tomatoes will exhaust your soil in a container one season, probably even a little bit before. So if you're going to be growing tomatoes in your containers, you only want to use that soil that one time uh, to grow your tomatoes unless you choose to use the commercial fertilizers. And that is up to you. But if you're wanting um, to do the kind of uh, gardening that we're doing and the growing that we're doing, then you only want to use that soil one time, uh, especially for tomatoes. Now our peppers seem to be okay because we did uh, go ahead and dig out half of that soil and throw some organic compost in there and they seem to be okay. Um, but we'll continue to monitor them compared to the ones that are in the ground in the big high tunnel and see which one prospers the most and, uh, and which one gives us uh, the yields that we're really looking for. The other items that are doing good in those containers, as you saw, are our herbs. And so we're still gonna empty out that soil when these herbs are done at the end of this season. And we're gonna refurbish all of our containers with new organic uh, potting mix and uh, start all over. We really need to guys, because again, if your soil is not in shape with what you're growing, you're gonna encounter aphids you're going to encounter spider mites those are the two very first ones that you'll see and then if you get up into chewers you know that they're at the higher 
uh, higher rank and, and they're usually the last. And once you're at Chewers, you know that you have some pretty healthy plants, but you wanna get past those. But guys, we never really got past the aphids and the spider mites in that little high tunnel. We just battled them with insecticidal soap. And then we just decided, you know, after the tomatoes uh, really generated tons of tomatoes for us, but they were planted in the ground um, in that little high tunnel, that we were gonna pull everything out with the exception of the herbs and uh, get ready for the fall planting season. And now we need to determine what we're gonna plant in there. So here's a good look at what quite possibly your container soil looks like if you've been using it year over year. So keep on doing your container gardening, guys. Just know that uh, depending on what you're growing, if they're heavy feeders, um, your soil is gonna be depleted probably in a season and you'll need to go ahead and revamp it the following year. Again, that depends on what you're growing. So it was the great clean out yesterday and he was certainly exhausted because uh, it was, I think 90, 94 here yesterday with a heat, it said it felt like it was 110 and it felt like it was 110 and we're gonna have that again today. So uh, yeah, we're continuing to get this cleaned up because fall planting is right around the corner and uh, we're excited. We're excited to show you where, really I wanna get through this summer. I don't even, I don't even wanna deal with this summer, um, but we have to, we have to and I'm hoping that the Lord gives us a little bit cooler temps uh, coming up because it is it is just really thick, humid, and hot here in Texas. But anyway, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll show you what we decide to put in the tubs. Uh, of course, we want to make it as cost efficient as possible um, and cost effective for us. So we're going to do some research and we'll be showing you guys what it is we decide to do. I got to get out there and start setting up my market because we are open today with veggies and uh yeah so love you all i hope you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up we are more than willing to show you what we're learning and uh and some of the failures that we have some of the successes that we have you know but overall we feel very blessed and uh so go ahead and hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up guys share this video with your family and your friends we love you all and we'll see you soon